Hello everybody, this is Cruise Man. Hello from Carrollton, Texas. I'm on my way to Fort Worth. I thought this would be a good chance to do another moto vlog. I am still trying to get this Cena Bluetooth backpack to work correctly. Uh, some of you know I've been struggling with this. Cena sent me a brand new uh, Bluetooth backpack and I hooked it all up and tried it. And the audio the first time out was even worse than it was with the previous backpack. Lights and how they installed. And uh, it was a, a relatively straightforward uh, plug and play installation. That led me to the conclusion that uh, it may not be the backpack. It may be the Cena 20S headset. So thanks to Memphis Mike, who also has a YouTube channel, a Goldwing YouTube channel, and you should check it out. It's a good one. He offered some suggestions on uh, clearing the, or doing a reset on the Cena 20S. I tried that and that does seem to help. The problem is it may be necessary to do that every time I use this. Now, I don't know right now what the audio is like on this video that I'm shooting right now. I never know until I get home and put it on the computer and can actually watch it and hear it. So it is a little frustrating when you spend 30, 45 minutes talking nonsense into this thing and you get home and you find out that you don't have any audio and you can't use the video. So nevertheless, we're giving it a try. This is about the third or fourth try. I tried it yesterday and it seemed to work. But nevertheless, I'm on the way to Fort Worth. It's a pretty nice temperature today. It's actually about 80 degrees. It's nice, but it's very windy. I'd say 25 to 30 mile an hour gusty winds coming out of the south. So it'll be a good chance to see how this functions in the wind and how the bike handles in this kind of wind because I'll be getting crosswinds once I get on the highway. But I have a few things to talk about. I think I mentioned last time we talked about that I had uh, had a chance to drive or ride a 2016 Goldwing and I had a chance to ride that on some roads that I'm very familiar with and that I had noticed a kind of pogo effect or, you know, on the 2018 Goldwing compared to the 2016. 2016 just seemed to be much smoother over the dips in the road. Now, I still prefer the suspension on the 2018 because it doesn't transmit as much harshness or vibration through the handlebars. You just don't feel it as much through the handlebars. But I was getting this, I call it a pogo effect. It's like riding a bucking bronco when you're going over some of these dips in the road. So since I made that video, I have since adjusted my suspension preload to a rider plus luggage, which stiffens it, the rear shock a little bit. That seems to help. That does seem to mitigate some of that bouncing I was getting. Now, in addition to that, that brings up another question now that we're talking about suspension, because I'll bet I get more comments on my 2018 motor vlogs and my other 2018 videos asking about the suspension system. And a lot of people have seen the videos by Max McAllister over at Traction Suspension, and I get a lot of questions. You know, if I buy a 2018, am I going to have to spend a lot of money upgrading the suspension system? Because this is an expensive bike. And to have to spend more money just to get it to handle properly or to ride properly is kind of a negative. Well, I've watched several of Max's videos. And uh, I actually used to be a Traction customer on my 2007 Goldwing. Um, I had the Traction Full Monty suspension system installed on that bike and noticed quite a, quite a big improvement. Of course, these are two different bikes. And now you can probably hear that wind coming through the helmet. And 
I've got my face mask closed. It's pretty breezy. So anyway, people are asking me how, you know, how should they respond to these videos by Max over at Traction? And uh, are they going to need to spend money on a suspension upgrade? Well, you know, I don't know if I have an answer for that. I want to lay the groundwork here and just say right up front that Max McAllister has forgotten more about suspension than I'll ever know. So I'm probably not qualified to deny anything he has to say regarding the Goldwing suspension. Now I find that the Goldwing suspension is fine for the way I ride the bike. I think it's more comfortable than the previous Goldwing. I think it's pretty compliant. But I'm, uh, I'm not a hardcore, you know, aggressive rider. I ride the bike pretty easy. Mostly commuting around town and some highway duty. Since I live in Dallas, we don't really have any uh, mountain curves to carve. You know, we're pretty much just straight away like you see here. So the suspension is fine for me. And I suspect it will be fine for a lot of people. However, I think the real question is, and a lot of people ask this question, because I see these comments. Well, Honda has a team of engineers. You know, they know what they're doing. They've been working on this bike for years. How could Max McAllister and Traction know more than Honda's engineers know? And who does he think he is questioning Honda's suspension components. So I guess that raises the question, is it feasible that Honda would spend the time and the money and the effort and the years to engineer an entirely new suspension system for the Goldwing and then basically go cheap on the components? And when I ask that question to myself, I immediately think about the GPS. So yes, it's perfectly feasible that Honda would spend a lot of money and time and energy engineering something really nice and then go cheap when it comes to time to get the components because they have this beautiful seven inch TFT screen, fully integrated electronics, and they bought the absolute cheapest, crappiest GPS money could buy to put on the bike. So I have no doubt that the same could be true of the suspension components. That said, I'm probably going to live with the stock suspension until such time that it requires service or replacement and then I'll probably look at what Max has to offer. I'm not going to take my brand new Goldwing out to Atlanta or to the Georgia area and have him do it, but you know, at 30, 40,000 miles, 50,000 miles, I may do that. I have no doubt that what Max has is better than what Honda is providing. That just is probably, there's probably no question to that. So, that's all I'm going to say about suspension and uh, traction, and you guys can decide and do whatever you want. I do, advise, I do think it's a good idea for you to go over and watch his videos. I think they're very informative. He also has a new video that talks about like a $30 fix that you can do to kind of improve your suspension without replacing all of the suspension components, and it's worth a look. Now, one of my other uh, subscribers also mentioned, he asked me, does this glare on this dashboard, is it annoying or does it bother you? Well, first of all, the GoPro that I'm using is at about chin height. It, it's about probably four or five inches below my eyesight. So you probably see a little more glare through the GoPro than what I'm actually seeing. But there is some glare visible and it can become a little annoying, but it's really not too bad. I don't think it's 
even worthy of mention. I just don't think it's that negative. The dashboard is so bright and so well laid out and so easy to read. Uh, I've never not been able to see anything because of glare. So, that's the last thing I'll say about that. Boy, it is windy out here. And honestly, the bike handles pretty well in the wind. Like I say, I'm getting probably 30 to 35 mile an hour gusts blasting me from the, uh, uh, kind of from the left side, left front side, or left front quarter. I will say one more thing about the dash. You do need to be very careful when you clean this dash. Because the plastic, the clear plastic cover is very soft and will scratch very easily. You need to make sure you soak it down with a lot of water to knock the dust off because if you've got dust on that clear plastic dash and you rub your finger across it, it's going to scratch that plastic. It's that soft. And that's just typical of acrylic or polycarbonate or whatever it is. So you need to make sure you soak it down with a pistol grip sprayer or with a hose. Just wash off as much of that dust as you can. And then use a very soft cloth to lightly, don't mash down on it, but very lightly clean that dash and dry it off. And I think it's a good idea to keep it clean because, you know, I can see some kid in a parking lot walking up and just dragging his finger across that dash. You know, people are stupid. They'll do stupid stuff. So I like to keep my dash clean. I clean it at about, now we get a lot of dust here. So I have to clean mine about every two or three days. Now, I had one other person post a comment on my YouTube channel and sent me an email also. He has a brand new 2018 Goldwing and this is a very, very important message. If you'll notice these rear view mirrors on the Goldwing will fold in and primarily the purpose for that is so that when it comes time to remove the mirror makes it easier to get to the screws other fasteners but this particular gentleman and I asked his permission to tell this story by the way and he said it was fine he was coming into his driveway on his brand new 2018 Goldwing and he felt like if he folded the mirrors in, it would give him a little more room to get his Goldwing past his daughter's car and some other structure, make it a little bit of a more narrow uh, profile. And he didn't realize, and what he did is he went between these two objects and then made a sharp left turn. And when he did, his brake handle on the right side hit that mirror which meant it applied his front brake and he went down and he went down hard did a lot of damage to the bike messed up his knee and his elbow and honestly that is something that Honda should warn people against you should never ride the motorcycle with those mirrors folded in it never occurred to me to even try to do that but now that he mentioned it uh, I think it's a fair thing to warn people about because when you turn the bike to the left, it will, that brake handle will hit that mirror when it's folded in. And bad things are going to happen if you're riding the bike when that occurs. So, you've been warned. I hope he recovers from his injuries and that his motorcycle is repaired and brought back to new status. Beautiful blue new Goldwing Tour. Anyway, I want to say thanks to all my subscribers. I appreciate the time you take to subscribe. I appreciate the time you guys take to watch these videos. I appreciate your comments. Um, I had somebody the other day make a comment on one of my videos. He suggested that I do a video talking about the top 10 things that Honda should address on this new Goldwing as far as things they should fix or repair or look into. I think it's a good idea. I think I'll probably do that. So uh, maybe maybe my next motor vlog I'll start talking about what are the 10 things that Honda should look at on this motorcycle and address. Oh, I had one other question. 
I've had several people ask me, or am I going to come out with maintenance DVDs for the 2018 Goldwing? And the answer is yes. I won't be. I, I may not have DVDs. Uh, they may all be on demand uh, in a downloadable version that you can download to your uh, smartphone or your iPad. But we will have a series of maintenance videos, and they'll be pretty extensive. I'm already working on some of them. And uh, it may be a little, few more months before they're ready, but they are in process. And uh, there's a lot more detail on these videos than what we had on the previous series for the 2001 to 2017 Goldlings and F6Bs. And interestingly, uh, those videos continue to sell very well. They're very popular. We're still selling the DVDs through Cycle Max, Wing Stuff, and SoCal Moto Gear. And of course, you can order them from cruisemansgarage.com. But they're only good for the 2001 through 2017 models and the F6B. So watch for those coming soon for the 2018 model. Again, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. I hope the audio on this video came out. And if it didn't, then I'm going to have to go to plan B. But that's all for now. Cruise Man signing off.